right away with a definitive declaration from the Quran. As I said, Muhammad, our beloved وسلم, was a Nabi for Bani Israel, for them, not for the followers of the Quran. We have proven this in YT 134. We're going to continue proving it and provide more evidence, direct evidence from the Quran and from the Hadith this time. So no one can accuse us of not benefiting from the Hadith. We benefit from the Hadith, but we use it in ways that they don't like. And therefore, when we present the Hadith that show they are wrong, they don't like this. And they call us Quraniyun and this and that and the other thing. Alhamdulillah, we follow the truth and we use the Hadith as historical references when we can ascertain that they are reliable, authentic, authoritative. And therefore, we don't use them against the Quran. We understand the Quran first and then we go looking through the historical references to see if some of these narrations don't agree with what the Quran says. So therefore, we start right away with a definitive declaration about the fact that Muhammad, our beloved وسلم, was a Nabi for Bani Israel. This is absolutely stunning because it's right there in the Quran. It says it. There is no doubt whatsoever. And you will see, inshallah, for yourself. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you all for coming. Uh, actually, well, it's been a while since I've been on live. Uh, on Facebook, it's been almost like a two weeks now uh yes on youtube it's been a while uh, on tiktok i'm on tiktok live at the same time uh, i'm on tiktok so for those who have subscribed on tiktok you're following me on tiktok you find me live for today's program inshallah uh, so i'm streaming live from youtube and facebook and at the same time i'm streaming live on tiktok and for tiktok it's been a, a minute like it's been a long time i've even come online uh so thank you all once again for coming. Uh, uh, peace be upon you, Sister Hawa Bashir, uh, Fatima Chin, uh, Dr. Dr. S. Kazi, Iron Man, uh, Muhammad Isaka. Yeah, salam. I miss you too. Hey, salam, Mawia, Naganka. Salam. Salam, Baba Seriu, Javier de la Cruz. Thank you all for coming. Peace be upon you all. Uh, and also on TikTok, I have, uh, yeah, I'm brother monetism. Salam, brother. Salam, salam. Peace be upon you. Uh, for those who are now joining, uh, thank you for coming. And let me see who those on YouTube. Uh, for my viewers on YouTube, uh, I don't know. Pardon me if I'm not able to go through the comments, but I, I, I'll, I'll try my best to. <clears throat> To follow some of your comments as as time goes on uh yeah you're welcome uh nazir nazir nse yeah uh iron man says i'm not a fan no problem i don't know if you understand the meaning of a fan <laughs> a fan means you are a supporter uh even isa alayhi salam quran chapter 61 verse 14 he had supporters who support him to god they are his fans yes if you support somebody you are the person's fan but it doesn't mean you are worshiping the person so if i if i have fans or on TikTok, or facebook on youtube they are not worshiping me they are just supporting what i do to god you understand so if you call yourself a fan or not that's up to your understanding but i don't see any problem with you saying so you're somebody's fan so let's say if right now i have to go a debate against a sunni or a shia and you call you say i'm the fan of uh, uh the correctional officer the baba shwipe there's nothing wrong with it it doesn't mean you're worshiping me it doesn't mean you are my servant so saying you are somebody's fan or not well i own you no no uh this thing on you so it's up to you so thank you all for coming i appreciate the the time and support i appreciate the time you have for me and and sorry for the uh bit late uh you know because i had to set things up you know as time as as, as soon as more as we grow 
uh, to enlighten more people, the more busier we become in our schedules. And so that is one of the things that held me back. So I apologize for that and thank you all for coming and for the patience. And as you see, the topic I chose uh, today has to do with uh, the problems with indoctrination in religion. Uh, when, when we say indoctrination, I'm talking about teaching someone to accept doctrines uncritically. Uncritically means you don't give them the chance to use their critical thinking abilities. You only restrict them into a box. And this is why many a times people are told to think outside the box. Don't always think inside the box because then you are, you are being mentally enslaved, right? And which is a problem in the, in the man-made dogmas and religions we have today. So when you take people and then they have been indoctrinated as such that always they keep telling you, my scholar says, my imam says, my, my, uh, our ulama says, you understand, our whatever, whatever says, <laughs> it becomes a problem. Because in the first place, who put such people in charge of you? Who? Who? Is it an institution or is it Saudi Arabia just deciding that these are your ulama for you and you, you uphold them in high esteem? Okay, the question is what if they are wrong? Have you ever scrutinized? Have you ever just checked some of the things they tell you if they are right or wrong? That you don't, you know? So these are some of the problems we have with people in this modern day world. And when you try to enlighten people to reflect and to think positively, they find you as an enemy to whatever uh, thing you have to say. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, as it goes, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنَ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّ لِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and acts righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims. Hazi sabili adu ilallah ala basiratin ana wa manitabani wa subhana allahi wa ma ana min al mushirkin. This is my way I invite to God Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to Allah for I am not among the idolaters, which are the mushriks. Al hakkum ir rabbikum fa man sha fal yu'min wa man sha fal yakfur. The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills let him believe and whoever wills let him disbelieve. It's a choice. You decide to believe or to disbelieve. I'm not responsible for you. You are not responsible for me. Ya you wal lazina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma as-sadiqin. Ho you who believe, beware of God. That is, reverence God. Have reverence for God and be with those who are honest. That is, those who are truthful. People, only people who are honest can tell you the truth. So be with those who are honest and don't be with the liars, the mushriks and the, you know, deviators. Yeah. Anyways, uh, before I started, I think I played... Uh, Dr. Honey's video, right? And Dr. Honey went to the extent to say that uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad salam, was the prophet for Bani Israel. This is quote unquote what he said. And he said, Oh no, the Quran actually testifies to that. And he went ahead to say, uh, Even though people tag him as the Quran alone follower, I don't see it as such. Uh, he said, when they find, when they scrutinize the hadith and find it reliable, according to him, if he finds it reliable, he can use this to draw his points and to to find it a, a reference point in history in order to 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 follow such an hadith. But yet he is claiming to follow the Quran alone for guidance. If that is the case. Why do you rely on hadith which are authentic? According to him, the hadith which they have historically proven that it is correct. He can use it for his reference point. And if that is the case, then I, I see this hypocritical viewpoint here. Because it is like telling me you only choose, pick and choose the hadith which suits your agenda, but then you are rejecting the hadith, the Sunnis, the Shias, the Mushriks are telling you these are the hadith we follow for Islam. You are rejecting all that ones, those ones, but yet you are agreeing with them in, in certain aspects that, oh, we can use this for a referent, uh, reference point, which is wrong, you know, so... Dr. Hani, if that is your standpoint of view, you are still standing somewhere on the edge of the pit because 
uh, you can't use somebody's, uh, you know, uh, thing that you claim is falsehood to draw your point and say, okay, you can use something reliable there. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so God is asking in Quran chapter 45, verse 6, Fabi Allahi wa ayati yuminun. You know, so in which hadith after God and his verses will, will they believe? So if you tell me you believe in the particular form of hadith again for your guidance in Islam, and you can cherry pick and choose which one is authentic, which one is not, or whatever have you, and then to use it in part of your Islam, then there's a question mark there. You will try, you have an agenda to, to manipulate the people again. And uh, as I choose, I chose the topic, uh, the, uh, the reason why I chose the topic, the problems with indoctrination in religion is because every religion you look around you, people have been indoctrinated, right? And this indoctrination is very chaotic. It's very dangerous to the extent that people will use emotion instead of rationale. And when people fail to use rationality and they rely on emotion, these people can kill you for free. And this is why a family member can hate his family member just because of religion. We see Abraham's father trying to, you know, attack him just because he's, he's advocating for God alone or the religion of God or God alone to be served. So we, we, find, we find a notion whereby when a person tries to convert from a particular belief to another belief, his family members will just attack him, find reasons to, to be, you know, aggressive against such a person and these are all led to the indoctrinations people receive from certain scholars and certain school of thoughts now however there is this notion of uh, what we call mazhab when we say mazhab we are talking about doctrine uh, a certain dogma that people follow now my my main problem uh, with with sectarians is not their mazhab my main problem with sectarians is is <clears throat> is the sharia, the laws, the judgment, the hukum, the uphold yeah, in high esteem in order to classify it as part of the deen. That is my problem against them. Having different school of thoughts, you are just going there to learn, to get some, acquire some knowledge in order to implement in certain aspects of your life. Uh, I sit in here, I've been to a madrasa before. You know, I've studied um, uh, MSE Arabic. I myself have sat down, I've done online studies of the classical Arabic, which is the Fusha. I myself have sat down to do my own critical thinking studies of the Arabic of the Quran. Now, the, this all pertains to a school of thought because you have to be taught something according to a particular school of thought, you know, terrain. But now it rests for the, you, the students, to decide, to make your own decisions whether what I have studied here is it reliable. Just because I go somewhere to study doesn't make that source of information that I've studied reliable. Just because I've studied from there. You understand? So you have people say, I've went to Azhar, I've studied in Egypt, I've went to Medina, I've went to uh, Mecca to study this, to do that. No, it doesn't guarantee that you have the authentic source of information from whatever you have studied. Now we have something we call, uh, 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 how would I say, uh, relevance, uh, relevant information or relevance of information. Now, when it comes to relevance of information, you have to deal with things which are relevant during a discourse or during a discussion or during a speech. Quran chapter 39 verse 18 says, You see, those who listen to the word and follow the best thereof, those who listen to the speech and follow the best of it, those who listen to the what discussion, whatever you're going to classify the al kawl to be, and follow the best of it, then God says, Ulaika allazina adahumullah wa ulaika hum those are the ones whom god has guided and those are the ones who possess intelligence so having an intelligence or being intelligent in 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 whatever aspect of life you belong to whether at your workplace in your family with your friends using your intelligence puts you in a higher 
a high esteem. You don't just uh, rely on information you have just received, whether blindly, whether stupidly, whether uninformed, you just take it and follow blindly. No, no, which is a wrong thing for people to do, right? And uh, there is this uh, guy, I think he's an Anif scholar based in Pakistan, is Mumtaz al -Haq. And I have this speech from him that he made. I played in one of my videos and I'm going to play. I don't know, for people on TikTok, they might get to hear it uh, signed, sounding clearly. So I'll try to play it for them to listen. So listen carefully what this man has to say. Then I move on to the main topic. Inshallah. So when people so make such carefully. claims on the internet or all over the world, what they're really saying, don't follow Abu Hanifa, don't follow Shafi, don't follow Imam Malik, don't follow Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, follow Sahih Hadith only. But oh, you don't know whether that Hadith is really Sahih. You don't know whether that Hadith is, is mansukh or not. And even if it is classified as Sahih, it's not been classified as Sahih by Rasulullah. It's been classified as sahih by other muhaddisun. So if you're going to follow another man's opinion at the end of the day, then what's wrong with following the opinion of a man whose opinion has already been followed about for 12 centuries? So we can't get away from the fact that all of us, all of us are blind followers and we have no choice but to be blind followers. Because if somebody says this is sahih hadith, how are you going to guarantee 100% it is sahih? It's not the Prophet didn't say it. Another man said it. And Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah, for example, in his compilation, there are eight, nine chains. Imam Bukhari didn't meet them all. He only had to base his judgment on what he heard. Hearsay. So you have to place your trust blindly on Imam Abu Hanifa or Albani or other Muhaddisun or Bin Baz that what he is saying is Sahih. And is it really Sahih? You can argue all night and all day till Qiyamah and you will go round and round. We've got no choice but to place blind trust. Thank you, Mumtaz al -Haq. <clears throat> Now, I hope you've, you've heard him sounding clearly what he said he mentioned the notion of blind following and he mentioned the notion of hadith and how the scholars present their hadith and he's telling the people that you have no choice but to be blind followers and which is a problem this is what we call indoctrination now it's a form of teaching that you be taught without critically thinking about what you have been taught so you just need to accept that school of thought teaching into you and then you go around spreading this mischievous information for instance if you speak to any hadith follower they will tell you this kind of statement oh the same people who read the quran are the same people who wrote the hadith that is number number one lie secondly they will tell you the quran you are using how did it get to you they will say, where did you get it from? Did it come from apps? Just to justify their means of following hadith books. So they will say, how did it get to you? You understand? They will go further to tell you that the prophet gave us the sunnah to follow. If you ask them to prove to you from one single verse from the Quran, where God, where the prophet say he gave you a sunnah to follow, it becomes a problem. They cannot prove that. What they do is they will tell you, Kul, atiullah wa atiw rasul. That's it. Is that what it means? So Atiullah wa Atiw Rasul means I should come and follow the Sunnah, obey God and obey the Messenger. It means come and follow the Sunnah. Then what? What about Prophet Aaron, uh, the bro Moses' brother, chapter twenty, verse ninety? When he told the people to follow him and obey him, does it mean they should come and follow his Sunnah? <clears throat> what about Abraham, chapter nineteen, verse forty-three? When he told his father to follow him so that he can teach him something of the knowledge which has reached him. To follow him so that he can lead him to the right guidance does it mean he should come and follow his sunnah you understand god says god has what conducted of every example in the quran for us huh? so if you have such examples in the quran why neglect all these examples god has given you and you are now following the whims and desires of your own scholars just because you belong to a particular school of thought and they are teaching you such mazhabs. So you don't question. You just follow blindly because that is what you have been told. You see the problem here. 
good. God says in that verse, in the dina in the laila islam. In the dina in the laila islam. Wa ma akhtalafa lazina utu li kitaba illa min baadi ma jaumul ilm. Bagia bainahu. Wa man yakhfaru, wa man yakhfur bi ayati lahi fa inna Allah sariu al hisab. Now, in the dinner, in the Lail Islam. Now, like I said, when when we are talking about the Deen in the Quran, what I define as the religion in the Quran is to believe in a supernatural being who controls your destiny. You understand? I'm not talking about a man-made religion where you have to be in in an institutionalized, uh, you know, department. No, I'm talking about your faith something which connects you between you and god alone there's nothing else we saw the example of abraham quran chapter 6 verse 74 if you read downwards it tells you how abraham discovered how to bond with god that is it that is the deen now so in the deen in the light islam indeed the religion with god is al islam that is the submission that is the main religion you have to focus on god right it is not about being in an institution. It is not about going for somebody to somewhere to take your shahada or going to a masjid to announce that, oh, now officially I want to become a Sunni Muslim. I want to become a Shia Muslim or Tariqa Titijaniya. That makes you a mushrik. You see. Now, one of the bases is found in Quran chapter 61, verse 9. Where God says, arasala rasulahu bil huda wa al haqq. You, uh, then he says and in another verse he says so now this uh, concept of manifesting the deen the religion uh, manifesting what he has sent the true religion over the entire religion because false religions have been what invented now, whenever you have something which is false, there is always the truthful one. Now, if you have a false God, there is the true God. If you have a false religion, there is a true religion. If you have a false book, then we have the true book. So this is how it goes in life, right? So God says, in the dinner, in the light, Islam, Quran chapter 3, verse 19. Then God says, وَمَا اخْتَلَفَ lazina." وما اختلف الذين اوتوا الكتاب الا من بعد ما جاءهم العلم بقي بينهم now those who have been given the book those who were given the book uh, did not dispute did not defy except after what had come to them of the ilm the knowledge uh, which is an injustice between them then god says and whoever disbelieves in the verses of god allah for in allah sarul is then god is swift in reckoning now, now, what I want us to analyze in this verse, that this verse I just quoted, chapter 3, verse 19, is to actually pay attention that when you are part of the deen, your focus is with God. It's not with a human being. And the knowledge you desire has to come from God, and it's not coming from a human being. So you are always focusing on what God is teaching you concerning the knowledge. Now, out of injustice, this is what causes division, and people started creating their sect because they hate what God is saying. So they have to say, I'm a Sunni Muslim, I'm a Shia Muslim, I'm a Ahmadiyya Muslim, Tariqa Tijaniya Muslim, I'm a Qadiriya Muslim, I'm a Salafiya, I'm a Wahhabiya. You understand? They hate the truth that God has to teach them for his religion. That is the faith. So they have to invent something new. Right? Now to see this notion, this is what it says here. In Quran chapter 2, verse 170, Surah Al-Baqarah, Let's see the notion of following God alone. Now, when you go to Quran chapter 2, you go to 170, verse 170. Now, in that verse, God is saying that, Wa iza akila lahum ma anzal Allah. Then they say what? Kalu bal matabi'u ma alfayna alayhi aba'ana. Awa law kena aba'uhum la yakiluna shay'an wa la yatadun. And when, whenever they are told, whenever it is said to them, or they are told, huh? come and follow what God has revealed, right? They should come and follow what God has revealed. 
what they end up telling you is kalu bal natabi'u ma alfayna alayhi aba'ana hmm? in fact we only we follow what we have found our fathers upon that is what they do they will only tell you we only follow what we found our parents our forefathers our fathers our ancestors upon that is what they will do awa law kana aba'uhum la yakiluna shay'an wala yatadu ah so god is now saying oh there's something wrong with my network here yeah sorry awa law kana aba'uhum la yakiluna shay'an wala yatadu yeah what if uh, what if their fathers did not understand anything nor were they guided that is the question here so you can't be a blind follower in islam you'll be the dumbest person ever to say you are just following something because your scholars say it blindly because quran chapter 17 verse 36 says wala takafu ma laysa laka bi il inna samaa wal basara wal fu'adu kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula he says do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge so if you don't have knowledge about something don't pursue that that doesn't mean okay don't believe in it just because i don't have knowledge in the quran doesn't mean i don't believe in it just because i don't have knowledge in the bible doesn't mean i don't believe in it just because i don't have knowledge about science doesn't mean i don't believe in it i'm talking for everybody here now you believe in something doesn't mean you're following it you can believe that uh who 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 can i use an example you can believe that cristiano ronaldo or messi is the best player in the world but you might not be his fan you don't even follow him or you might not like him but you believe that he is the best now the notion of what i'm trying to let people understand is when they are told to come and follow what god has revealed because that defines your faith between you and god that defines the knowledge you have concerning the deen god has given you because it is the deen of God in the deen in the light Islam. So why now rely on another person who has no idea what God is speaking about to now tell you what you have to do? It's just like being employed, your employer employing you in a company and you allow somebody else who is outside that company to instruct you what to do in the company. It shows that you lack common sense. So God says in Quran chapter 2 verse 170, and when they are told, follow what God has revealed, they say, in fact, we follow what we found our fathers upon. What if their fathers did not understand anything, nor were they guided? This is a question for you and I. So what if our fathers are blind followers? And what if they didn't understand, they lack reasoning, common sense? What if they were not guided? Have you asked that question? Or just because you blindly trust your parents, trust your scholars, trust your shuyuks, your imams, your ulama? So they have the final say. So how come they will be judged? And how come Prophet Muhammad himself will be judged? Quran chapter 6 verse 51 to 52. Go and check. His recording will not be, you will not be answerable for his recording. Neither will he be answerable for your recording. But out of your foolishness, you make scholars tell you that he will intercede for you on the day of judgment. Are you a blind follower? Are you following the deen of God? The answer is no. So when they are told, come, let's follow what God has revealed, they say, no, in fact, we follow what we have found our fathers upon. So your fathers are going to put you to Jannah. There's no problem. Keep up the good work. Now, so we see the notion of following what God has revealed decides your faith between you and God. The moment you reject such and say, we follow what we found our fathers upon, this is where you follow the man-made religions. This is what we call indoctrination. Because you have been taught to accept something uncritically and you just follow it blindly. So it goes against Quran chapter 17, verse 36, because God says, Wala taqafuma, laysa laka Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So, brothers and sisters, why now will you be practicing something for 50 years of your life in the religion, so called man made religion, and you don't know what you're doing? Ask anybody next to you right now who claims he's praying five times. Ask him to prove to you where God says five times. He'll be looking at your face. You say, ah, hey, so you don't believe there's five prayers? It's not as if I don't believe. Can you prove it to me? Open the book of God. Show me five times. Okay, if you say in your hadith, show me where prophet went to the sky to bring five prayers, the ones you are doing. So if you say he gave you five prayers, how come you have Salat al-Jum'ah? Was it part of the five prayers he went to bring? Salat al-Eid, was it part of the five prayers? Salat al-Janazah, was it part of the five prayers? The five salats? 
Why can't you reason? So if you claim he went to bring five salats, how come you have extra salats which are not included in those salats he went to bring? And yet you are doing all these extra ones. And these five salats, according to you, he has to even negotiate with God. Is it like a business negotiation? So God of all people doesn't know that people can do it or not. And Moses, who is dead, will now tell Muhammad that, oh, go back, your people cannot do it. So Moses people can do salat, but people of Muhammad cannot do salat. And you people are buying all this garbage news. Why? Which shows that people have been indoctrinated to accept things blindly. So don't be surprised when the scholars are looking to your faces and calling you stupid. And you don't understand why they are calling you stupid. Right? So whenever somebody tries to wake you up, give you the spiritual awakening, you find him as an enemy. You start tagging this person. We hate this guy. Who does he think he is? Does he think he is smaller, smarter than our scholars? That is not the point. <clears throat> Iron Man, I have a program to, to enlighten people. Check the program up there. Check the title. I'm here to discuss and help people to, to use their reasoning and be enlightened. If you want a discussion with me, inbox me. My phone number is there. I can put it on the program. You, you call me, I arrange a program with you. You come and have a discussion. And I don't have discussions by typing because I need to look you in the eye yeah, and have the discussion with you. I don't do discussions by typing. You understand? No. Uh -huh. So for me, that is a waste of time because physically having a discussion with somebody puts in the feeling, the, the expressions, the emotions, everything you see it in the person's eyes. When a person is typing, a lot of signals are missing, right? Uh -huh. So if you want to have a discussion with me, please page me, uh, back channel me, let's arrange. I'll bring you on like this. We arrange a program, we have a discussion. I'm not running away from anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Now, eh, Salam Haj London, yeah. Eh, salam Badi Unaganka, Salam. Yeah, so let's let's continue. Now, so using your rationale, using rationale in the dean is very, very important. You have to pay attention how to use your rationality. Now, you have to always put emotion at the back. Don't put emotion at the front. The reason why people get agitated, aggressive, when something is mentioned uh, concerning faith and it goes against what they have been indoctrinated, they get agitated and they like to strike. As the Quran chapter 22 verse 72 says, when our verses are recited to them as evidences, you recognize denial in their faces and they almost attack or assault those who recite our verses to them. Now this shows you how people hate the truth because of they put emotions first instead of pushing what? Rationale, right? And this is why I exhort everybody, listen to me, you always use your rationality. Don't put emotions in front. And this is why when people come to listen to me for the first time, they say, oh, this guy is harsh. I'm harsh because, yes, you are still using your emotions. You understand? If somebody acted foolish, hmm? let's say I give you a, 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 an empty glass and I say, go and give me a glass of water. And you went and put dirty water in the cup or you want to put sand in the glass. You bring it back. The first definition of what you did is a foolish act. That is a stupid act. Now, what is what? Is, who is a fool? If I say you are a fool, who is a fool? A fool is someone who fails to use his common sense, who lacks some, uh, who lacks good judgment. So, if you had good judgment or common sense, when I asked, when I and I said, "Give me a glass of water," you could have exactly put water in the glass and brought it to me. When you went, you didn't find water. Why will you bring me sand or dirty water? That's not what I asked for. So now it shows that you acted a fool, and you are a fool. Now, that's not an insult. That is a definition of what the people have done or the person has done. So in it, in same goes with religion. Now, if you are blindly following what scholars have indoctrinated you with and you can't answer for what you are being asked in the deed, it shows you are a blind follower and you are a fool. That is not an insult because you lack good judgment. That is why you never bothered to scrutinize what the scholar was telling you. So you base your faith blindly and follow what somebody else is sending you to hell and you don't bother.
to verify. After the Quran telling you, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. But yet you look over the Quran and follow your scholar blindly. So what is the definition here? You are a fool. Is it an insult? The last time I checked, no. It's the truth. But do you know why people hate the truth? Quran chapter 43 verse 78. We have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. So when people hate the truth, then they start tagging you that you are being offensive, you are being harsh, you are being rude. So people don't know the difference between being real and being rude. When you are being real, when people hate your realness, they say you are rude. When you refuse to be silent, people will say you are violent. So people always have an opposite reaction to what is tied as the truth in life. So pay attention to that. Now, what I was talking to you earlier about following what God has revealed determines whether you are in the deen that God has stipulated for you. Now, when I take you to Quran chapter 16, verse 104, Surah Nahal, I take you to verse 104. Let's see what God says concerning the verses of God. Now, chapter 16, verse 104, God says, Indeed, those who do not believe in the verses of God, God will not guide them. You see, God will not guide them. And they will have a painful punishment. Now, somebody will say, if God is merciful, why will he punish us? Your government likewise, for example, your government likewise, they are merciful, right? They love you as a citizen. But why is it that when you commit a crime, they like to arrest you? They like to jail you? They like to blacklist you? They like to sentence you? Why do they do that? Even though they love you as a citizen. But you went below, you, you went above the, you have trespassed their laws. So if God of, God of all people who created mankind, he wants to punish you for a crime you committed, and you are saying, no, God doesn't have to do that. Oh, really? Wow. So I guess your government should also leave you for free if you commit a crime because they love you. You are a citizen. Now, indeed, those who do not believe in the verses of God. Now, listen carefully. Now, this belief is a choice. It's a free will. God is not forcing you to believe, but there's a condition to it. Quran chapter 18, verse 29. God says, if you like believe, if you like disbelieve. That's up to you. But he says, indeed, those who do not believe in the verses of God, God will not guide them because he can only guide you through his verses. When you listen to his words, that is when he will guide you. That is why Quran chapter 2 verse 170 says, and when they are told, come and follow what God has revealed, they say, no, in fact, we follow what our fathers are doing are upon. Then God is asking, what if their fathers did not understand anything nor were they guided? So similarly, if you don't believe in what God has revealed, how can you be guided? Because maybe your father did not understand anything. Maybe your father was not guided because he never followed the verses of God. So now God says, if indeed you don't believe in the verses of God, he will not guide you. Why, why are you offended with this? If you go to a workplace, your employer has given you rules and regulations to abide by and you don't follow it. How do you expect to do your work intact? You know, you can't fulfill your assignment well. So you need to follow the guide rules that you have been given in order to achieve the goal and get your salary. Same way God says on the day of judgment, he will pay you your reward. Quran chapter 39 verse 61, you will only be saved on the day of judgment by your achievement, not by any other favor. As the Hadith books keep lying to you and they tell you only the mercy of God will save you on the day of judgment. God never said that. God will save you by your achievement because he told you clearly what you need to do. That's why he says, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. You don't have knowledge about Salat, avoid it. You don't have knowledge in Zakat, avoid it. Deal with other matters that you understand. Later on, the matter of Salat will become clearer to you. Just because somebody understands Salat in this fashion and you don't understand in that same fashion doesn't mean the person is wrong and you are right. You just need knowledge to pursue something. So when you acquire the knowledge, then pursue it so that you will not look stupid when you are asked, why do you do it this way? Why do you do that? Look, everything I do in Islam, put me down. Let's sit one-on-one -on -one and see whether I can explain to you or not. I can explain to you 110% exactly how I understood it perfectly. I'm not doing anything blindly. You understand? So similarly, 
when Moses, Quran chapter 18, verse 65 to 82, when Moses went to seek for knowledge, he went to a teacher who is way knowledgeable than him. What did the teacher told him? How can you even have patience for what you don't have experience in? Now, just because you have knowledge in your own field doesn't mean you have it all. Somebody might have a particular knowledge. You haven't reached the inch of that knowledge. So what did Moses do? Moses went to a teacher who is way knowledgeable than him, thinking that he knows it all. When the teacher does something, he wants to correct the teacher. They, sit, they sat in the sheep. Uh, he punctured the hole. Moses was telling him, why will he do this? You want to sink us all? Then this is an abominable thing to do. You understand? Now, somebody has seen how far a journey can go that you have never even take one step to that journey before. So when you are dealing with people who are ahead of you in certain aspects, yours is just to listen and follow the best of it. It doesn't mean take everything the person is saying. No. Because the person also has to acquire that knowledge in order to give it to you. So when you come to certain people and they are giving you what they have to present of their knowledge, yours is just to pick up the most sensible part of their knowledge and implement it to yours. Right? If you can disprove somebody clearly by pointing out clearly from the verses of God, because the verses of God are the, is the ultimate knowledge and not only knowledge, the knowledge as stated in Quran chapter 3 verse 19. So if you can use the verses of God to disprove somebody, that is the ultimate knowledge. Just as the servant of God did to Moses by using the knowledge God has given him to disprove whatever Moses was trying to refute. That's how knowledge works. So let's bear that in mind. Now, when I take you to Quran chapter 49 verse 16. Now, usually this is what people do. The reason why I'm saying problem with indoctrinating in religion. When you go to Quran chapter 49 verse 16. What do people usually do? And God being uh, all-knowing and omniscient, he knows it all. This is what he's telling us. He asked a question. He told the messenger to say, too nice, uh, too nice on, on TikTok, too, too nice. I'm, I'm streaming live on YouTube and Facebook, right? So for the verses you have missed, if later on after my TikTok live, if you go to my YouTube or Facebook page, uh, you can replay the video and get the verses I'm quoting, right? Uh -huh. So sometimes when, I, when I'm into the, uh, you know, the, the monologue, I don't focus on the, on the, you know, typing, you understand? So you can reference point in my videos and you can get it. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, so let's move on. Now, Quran chapter 49, verse 16. God asked the messenger to say, God asked the messenger to say, He says, Kul, atu allimun Allah bidinikum, wallahu yalamu ma fi samawati wa ma fil ar. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. Now, God asked the messenger to tell the people, Are you the ones informing God? Are you the ones informing God or teaching God your religion? Are you teaching God about your religion? Are you the one going to teach God your deen, the, the religion you have created for yourself? The Mammit, the Sunni, the Shia, uh, uh, the Tariqa to Tijaniya, whatever you are doing. Are you the ones going to teach God your religion? Then it says, Wallahu ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard. While God knows whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. So are you the one going to teach God your religion? The religions you have created, the Sunni religion, the Salafiyya, the Wahhabiyya, the Ahmadiyya, the Qadiriyya, the, the... You name it, whatever you, you have for yourself, you name them. Uh, the Judaism... Uh, your Christianity, Method Methodist, Catholic, Catholic, whatever, you may name them. Are you the one going to teach God your religion? When he knows whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Are you? Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. And God is aware of all things. He, he knows everything, right? So are you the one now going to teach God your religion? That That is a big mess if you do that. 
So why not just humble yourself to rather listen to what God has to tell you? <laughs> Instead of you formulating new dogmas, doctrines, to now tell God <laughs> instead what has to be done. And the, one of the dumbest reasons you hear from people is, oh, the Quran we know is the best book, but it doesn't explain itself. So you need another book to explain it. Oh, my God. Uh, something coming from God, you are telling us another book from human being has to, so that human being is smarter than God. Hello. The other day, somebody was telling me, brother, why is it that people who claim to follow the Quran alone, they differ in some understandings? It's normal. Look, in a family, you can dis have misunderstandings. In a workplace, you can have misunderstandings. In a company, in a business, you can have misunderstandings. The objective has to remain the same, right? Uh, even prophets, we see the difference in their understandings. There is misunderstanding. Like I just showed you, Moses went to seek for knowledge, but he had misunderstanding with the uh, servant of God, whom the scholars of the sectarians classify as Khidr. He, they had misunderstandings. It's normal. Now, when you come to the sole purpose of the Quran, God says you do not have to pursue what you don't have knowledge about. So what you have knowledge, pursue it. Now, when you are pursuing the Quran, Sometimes what I want people to understand is, uh, if you go to Quran chapter 20, verse 114, this is the advice God gave Muhammad, alayhi salam. And that is the initiative I also take whenever I'm dealing with the Quran, which I want people to understand. God says, فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ مَلِكُ Then he says, وَلَا تَعَجَلْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يُخْدَى إِلَيْكَ وَحْيُ Then he says, وَكُرْ رَبِّ الزِّدْنِ إِلْمَ now, the reason why God is telling the messenger to not hasten with the Quran before its inspiration is completed to him and to say, and to say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Because the knowledge only, the knowledge of the deen only, and I repeat, only comes from Allah, from God. Do you understand? So now, you do not have to hasten with the Quran if you don't understand something, if you are doubting something, if you have not well, you are not well endowed in a certain aspect of the knowledge, don't rush with it. Before its inspiration is completed, remember God can inspire anybody. It doesn't, God doesn't only inspire prophets. Right? The first person who invented aeroplane was inspired. The first person who invented the sheep was inspired. The first person who invented the mobile phone was inspired. Anybody who is inspired to do something or bring something into existence has been inspired by God, whether you like it or not. You understand? Prophet Muhammad never taught himself the Quran. It is God who taught him the Quran. This is why God asked him to say, Wa Rabbi zidni ilma. So, Ar Rahman, Allama al Quran, Khalaq al Insan, Allama al Bayan. God is the one who created the human being, He is the one who teaches the Quran. So if he taught Muhammad the Quran, are you saying he cannot teach me the Quran? Then you are the dumbest person ever on earth. To think God will choose an Arabian somewhere in the desert and teach him the Quran and they cannot teach me the Quran. What is wrong with people? Like seriously? You understand? How do you limit God? Okay. So now, dealing with this aspect, we have notions of topics in the Quran. If you are not endowed with the knowledge, don't hasten, don't rush. Just ask God to increase you the knowledge. Then with time, you understand. Simple. <laughs> as simple as it is. Look, I don't have knowledge in a particular topic. I will not discuss it. You will not see me in my videos discussing it. Whatever you see me discussing in my videos is whatever I've, I've, I'm well endowed in the knowledge of it. This is why you will see me confidently telling people to step out, let's have a dialogue. Because I'm not here to manipulate you. You are not paying me for the lectures I do. Do you get my point? Yes. So if I'm manipulating the people, the deal is between me and God. He will deal with me if I'm here to lie to the people. That is how it works. So when you think, oh, this guy says Salat is like this. Uh, oh, I don't buy that. Fine, that is up to you. You think I'm lying? Fine. Find me. My phone number is scrolling on the screen there on YouTube, on Facebook. You can inbox me. Page me later. Let's arrange. I'll bring you on. Let's have a live dialogue. Then you see who is playing with the people's conscience. 
as simple as it is. You understand? Because I call on God to give him me knowledge. Now, when the sectarians still tell, always tell you, oh, you claim you are a Quran alone follower. How come you defy and understand? It's normal. Even the sectarians, they defy and understand it. When you take a verse of the Quran, their scholars have different opinions on it. The school, four schools of thoughts they follow, the mashabs they follow, Maliki, Shafi, Hanabi, Anafi, Hanbali, they all defy. They don't agree in everything. The verses you see in the Quran, Sunnis understand it different. Shias understand it different. They don't agree. They will lie to you and say, oh, we are agreeing the principles, like the Shahada, like the Salat, like the Zakat. They are lying. They don't agree in everything. I'm telling you for a fact. Wallahi lazim. If they say I'm lying, they should find me for a live dialogue. Let's have a discussion on that. I'm serious. They don't agree. Look, even in the Sunni religion, the Wahhabis and the Salafiyya, they don't agree on everything. Wallahi, they don't agree. Even in Tariqa to Tijaniya in Africa, their scholars don't agree on everything. It is normal. Look, go to Quran chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 7, and go and see Prophet Muhammad himself. When he came out of his house with the truth and told the believers, not all the believers agreed with him. It's normal. So just because me and somebody has a difference in understanding in a Quranic verse, remember that is why there is a judgment day. And remember Quran chapter 17 verse 84. He says, uh, كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَىٰ شَاكِلَتِهِ فَرَبُّكُمْ آلَمُوا بِمَنْ هُوَ أَحَدَىٰ سَبِيلًا each act according to his manners and your lord is aware of who is guided in a way you understand so you act according to what you understand in the quran let me act according to what i understand i cannot force you to believe in what i believe neither can you force me to believe in what you believe because that will become an indoctrination and when i come here i lecture people i'm not superimposing my thoughts on people what i do is i give you the free thinking ability to think for yourself to question things, even question me. When I quote verses, go and check it for yourself. I don't say believe me blindly. All I'm doing is I'm awakening the masses who are asleep. Because when you wake up, life becomes easier for me as well. Because then I will not be burdened facing mushriks out there. It will be easy task facing the mushriks out there. Simple as it is. Let's move on. Now, what people fail to realize is when you go to Quran chapter 42, verse 21, that is Surah Al Shura, chapter of the consultation. Now, God said something interesting in that verse. I want us to pay attention. Now, this all falls in the problems we have with indoctrination in what? In religion. Now, when I mean religion, I'm not only limiting it to Islam, I'm, I'm extending it to Christianity, Judaism, whatever religion you have out there, people are claiming to be part of when you go to quran chapter 42 verse 21 chapter 42 verse 21 it says am lahum shuraka u shara'u lahum min ad-din ma lam yazanu bi illah wa lawla kalimatu al-fasl la qudiya bainahum inna az-zalimina lahum azaban alim god is asking a question especially the sectarians the mushriks like the sunni the shia the tijaniya the ahmadiyya the you know, people formulating new dogmas and, you know, religions for themselves. God says, or oh, do they have partners, idols? When we say idols, shuraka, shura shuraka, that's idols. That is the partner, those who you partner with God, that those who you associate with God, right? Now, do they have associates, idols, who legislate for them? The word shara'u, shara'u comes from the word shara'a. To, is to legislate, to give laws to somebody. Shara'u lahum min ad-deen. You see the ad-deen. This is the religion of the man-made concept. Because whenever a human being like you formulate laws for you and attach it to a religion and give it to you, it becomes a man-made religion. Shara'u lahum min ad-deen. Ma lam ya'azanu bi illah. Who legislate for them of the religion to which God has not authorized, to which God has not granted permission? Do they have such idols? Who are your idols? Is it Maliki? Is it Hanafi? Is it Hanbali? Is it Shafi'i? Who is it? Is it Imam Bukhari? Or who? Muslim? Or who? Jamia Tirmidhi? 
Abu Daud, Sunana Ibn Nisa. Who is it? Who? Is it Zakir Naik, Mufti Menk, Yasir Kadi, Numan Ali? Who? Asim Al Hakim? Who? Mention them. Are they your idols? Are they the ones giving you legislations in the deen which God has not authorized? Because no Sunni on earth can prove to me where God asked you to be a Sunni Muslim. So you are part of a religion which you have been indoctrinated to follow blindly and you uphold the laws in high esteem and yet you hate somebody who says he's a Muslim and he follows the Quran alone for guidance. You see how the hatred arises. I decided to follow the book of God alone. Faith is a choice. I can decide to believe in God or disbelieve in God. It's a free choice. If God wanted us to become believers, none of us would be against God. Right? So if I decide to be a believer, it's a choice. If I decide not to believe in God, it's a choice. You can't force somebody to believe by force. Quran chapter 10 verse 99 to 100. Go and check. Are you going to force the people to believe? You can't. <laughs> it is only by the permission of God somebody can believe. Right? And then people who decide to use their reasoning, their akal, they are the ones who use their reasoning to believe in an appropriate manner. So that's how simple it, it is. So God says, Walawla kalimatul fasl. If not for the word, the decisive word that God has issued, that there is a judgment deed, then God will have decided between them. And indeed, the transgressors will have a painful punishment, which is a, a must. Transgressors will always be punished, even in a, in a human made laws, even in government, in countries. When you are a transgressor and you transgress the laws of the nation, you'll be punished. And that is a must. And that I support. Right? Uh -huh. So let's continue. Now, when you go to Quran chapter 33, verse 67, these same people who have idols, who give them legislations in the deans. On the day of judgment, this is how they will lament. Quran chapter 33, verse 67. Now listen carefully what people will tell God on the day of judgment because they refuse to use their reasoning and they follow their scholars blindly. So check. Quran chapter 67, uh, uh, chapter 33, verse 67. Waqalu rabbana inna ana sabila. Now, before that, before they will say that, listen what they will say. Yawma tukallabu wujuhum finnar. Yakuluna ya laytana atana Allah wa atana Rasula. Waqalu rabbana inna atana sadatana wa kubara ana fa adalluna sabila. The day their faces will be turning around in the hellfire. Then they will say, what to us if we have obeyed God and obeyed the messenger? Now remember Quran chapter 4, verse 80. Rasula Allah. Whoever believes uh, uh, obeys the messenger is obeying God. Because whatever the messenger has to tell you is coming from God, according to the Quran, not his personal life. Not <laughs> uh, when he tells his wife to fry fry, uh, fry rice and chicken. Not that one. When it comes to the, his messengership duty, what is a messenger? A messenger is given a message to deliver. It's someone who carries a message to deliver. So Quran chapter 5 verse 67, God is talking to the messenger. Ya you are Rasul. Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbika. Wa illam taf'alu fama ballakta risalatahu wallahu yasimuka min al-nas. Inna Allah la yadil kawm al kafirun. Now Quran chapter 5 verse 67. God says, oh, you the messenger, deliver what has been revealed to you from your Lord. And if you do not, then you have not delivered his messages. Now listen carefully. A messenger has a message from God to give you. And what, ask any mushrik out there, what was the message given to Muhammad? He will say the Quran. That's a message from God. Hadith, the hadith of Bukhari you have, is it a message from God? The answer is no. It's Bukhari who wrote them to you. Buhari never existed. After 230 years after the Prophet, before he came, over 200 years, before you started having Hadith books, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. After the Prophet, in your own fabricated Hadith, he is telling you, La taktubu anni, woman ketaba anni gaira al-Quran, anni. 
He told you do not write anything from him except the Quran. So how come now you are foolishly telling us those who wrote the Quran are the same people who wrote the Hadith? Are you in your right senses? So how come the Hadith you have is he it has the signature of Imam Bukhari? Rawawul Muslim. Rawawul Bukhari. So if Bukhari is the one narrating the Hadith and he wrote it with his signature, and your scholars, especially Imam Albani, who came later on to classify them as Sahih and Da'if and Hassan and Kudusi and whatever. And now you are claiming the same people who wrote the Quran are the same people who wrote the Hadith. Then where is your common sense? The Hadith you have, the, the topmost Hadith you have in the world is by Sahih Bukhari. So if Imam Bukhari is the topmost Hadith you have, and you are telling us out of your stupidity, that the same people who wrote the hadith are the same people who wrote the Quran. Are you in your right senses? The Quran, does it have Imam Bukhari's signature there? Does it have Abu Dawood, Sunan Ibn Nisa, Jami al Tirmidhi signature there? So why won't you reason for once? Is it just because you have been falsely indoctrinated in your religions and you fail to reason and you think your scholars are the ultimate? Seriously. Now, on the day of judgment, these people who refuse to obey God and obey the messenger, because God gives the messenger a message to give you, which is the Quran. And he has delivered it. We have it today. That is the Quran. That is the word of God. Ask any Sahih Bukhari follower. The Hadith, is it the Kalimatullah? No, it is not. The Quran, is it the Kalimatullah? They will say, yes, it is. So now that is the word of God which has to deliver. God says, they will say, وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا O oh, our Lord, إِنَّ أَتَعْنَا سَادَتَنَا وَكُبَرَا أَنَا فَادَلُّنَا سَبِيلًا God only said you should come and obey God and obey the messenger. You went ahead to go and obey Imam Maliki, Hanafi, Shafi, Hanbali, go and obey Sahih Bukhari, go and obey uh, Sahih Muslim. These are the ones you are obeying. I don't know how the word Rasul now became Imam Bukhari, Imam, uh, Imam Muslim, yeah? how he became Zakir Naik, how he became Mufti Malik. How did he become like that? How did one messenger now become several dog dogmas you have followed? So now on the day of judgment, people will lament and tell God, we obeyed our masters. When we say Sadatana, it means your masters. Huh? You hear people say, my Sayyid, my Sayyid. Sayyid is a, like one master. Like somebody who is your master. But Sadatana is a plural form. So our masters, Wakubara Ana, when we say Kubara Ana, is like somebody who is Kabir, somebody who is greater, your senior or elder or your leader. So you obeyed your masters and your leaders. Who are your masters? We can see them. The Imam Maliki, according to the Sunni doctrine, their masters are Imam Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, Hanafi. When you go to the Shias, they have Imam Hussein, they have Imam Ali, they have whatever. You understand? They are scholars like that. Those are their masters and their leaders. Then God says, Father Luna Sabila, these people will say, We obey these masters and our elders, but they misled us from the way because you have been wrongly indoctrinated. You fail to use your reasoning, to even question your leaders. If you are in a classroom as a student and you don't study and your teacher makes a mistake, who will correct your teacher? Hello? If I'm following my teacher blindly and he makes a mistake, who will correct him? Now, just because you are following a particular teaching and you don't have knowledge in something pertaining that teachings doesn't mean you don't believe in it. You believe in it is different from following it. So wait till you have the knowledge, then you follow in its entirety. You understand? So we have concept in the Quran. It doesn't mean just because you believe in the Quran, must, that means it's a must to follow everything. No. You need to first understand it. Knowledge can be given to you maybe in two, three years. Sometimes you don't have the knowledge at once. If you doubt something concerning the Quran, don't practice it, please. You look, you'll be the dumbest person to be practicing something you can't explain. Don't do things out of blind faith. Do it with certainty that you know what you're doing. Now, and I take you to Quran chapter 3, verse 95. Now, this is what the sectarians have not been taught concerning Islam. The Islam you have been following, Prophet Muhammad as a messenger, which Akira or which creed 
or Milla, did God ask him to tell the people to follow? Did he say we should follow his sunnah? Did Prophet Muhammad ever in the Quran say, Hey, oh, my people, come and follow the sun my sunnah? Let's check. Quran chapter 3, verse what? 95. He says, Kul, Sadaqallahu. God has spoken the truth. Fattabi'u millata Ibrahima Hanifa wa ma kana min al Now whenever you see the word kul in the Quran this is the utterance of the messenger the rasul so the messenger has been asked to tell the people kul means say so now he's going to tell the people sadaqallahu god has spoken the truth because that is what we need the truth is coming from god as i quoted chapter 9 verse 119 he says, Ya you Lazina Amanu, itta kulla wa kunu ma aswadikin. Now, when you are with the swadikin, it means you are the honest people who tell you the truth. So if we are with the swadikin, we are with God. So now God is saying, to, telling the messenger to tell us, Kul, sadaqallahu, God has spoken the truth. Fattabi millata Ibrahima Hanifa wa ma kena min al mushirikin. So follow the creed of Abraham octodosly, correctly, truthfully, for he was not of the idolaters. This is what Muhammad salam, was asked as a messenger to tell you and I. And people are foolishly saying, I'm following the sunnah of Muhammad. So if you are following his sunnah, this is his correct sunnah in the Quran. He is asking you to follow the Millata Ibrahima. So somebody you claim you are following is telling you to follow Millata Ibrahima. But it's obvious. You have been indoctrinated by your scholars. So this is the different school of thought you are following, a different mazhab, a different indoctrination. So you are buying your gate tickets to hell. And good luck. You have already made the check-in. Now, people fail to realize that the scholars you have around you have been are like puppets have been bought and paid for to incite you to think in a particular way which is within a box they don't give you the room to think outside the box and you fail to realize that so the last verse i'll quote before giving the chance for for callers to join in if i take you to quran chapter 4 verse 125 surah to nisa and you see the comparison of what god means concerning who follows the creed of abraham can they be compared with any other mushrik out there? The answer is no. So let's check. Quran chapter 4, verse 125. Oh, I failed to share the screen today on my uh, YouTube and Facebook. Let me try to share it. Hey, salam, I share it on the screen. I'll be coming to the questions and answers. So bear with me. Pardon me for not paying attention to that. Now, Quran chapter, chapter 4, verse 105. He says, he says, Woman Ahsanu Dinan Minman Aslama Wajahawli Lahi Wahua Muhsin Wattaba Amilata Ibrahima Hanifa Wattahaza Lahu Ibrahima Khalila. God is saying, and who is better in Deen, in the religion, whether you are in the Sunni religion, Shia, uh, Christianity, Judaism, who is better in the Deen than one who has submitted his aim, Wajahu? Lillahi, his aim to God, to Allah, while being benevolent, a good doer. When you say muhsin, somebody who does ahsan, who does good deeds, right? Hassan. Then he says, Wattaba millata Ibrahima Hanifa, as well as follows the creed of Abraham orthodoxly, correctly. Who is better than such a person? Because a Shia cannot be better than you, a Sunni cannot be better than you. Any person in any other sect cannot be better than you. You see, because you are following what the messenger was asked to tell you. Quran chapter 3, verse 95. He told you clearly, followed Sadaqallahu, Fattabi'u millata Ibrahima Hanifa, wa ma kena min al -mushirikin. I'm obeying the messenger because God asked him, cool, to say. Now I say, okay, Samina wa Atana, I've obeyed you. I've heard you, I've obeyed, we have obeyed you. So why will I end up being a mushrik again? So now, Quran chapter 4, verse 125. 
Quran chapter 4 verse 125, God made a comparison and say who is better in religion than one who submits his aim to God while being benevolent and follows the creed of Abraham octodosly. And God has taken Abraham as a Khalil, when meaning a close friend. Salim. Now, based on Quran chapter 4, verse 125, if I've submitted to God and I'm following exactly what he instructed the messenger to tell me and I'm following, I have no problem. I don't see where the problem is. You see, so why is it that people are struggling and what and disturbing themselves with doctrines that God never yeah. thank you. Aha, uh -huh. so now <clears throat> The reason why I said problems with indoctrination in religion is to tell people that the indoctrinations you have been you have been given, you have to be cautious of what you are being taught. Now, many a times, if you see 10 group of people who claim to be Christians sitting at one particular place, you either find two or three of them who are very well endowed in the scriptures, who know about the Bible. If you see about 10 or 20 group of Muslims sitting down, you only find about one or two who know what the Quran says. The rest might only know how to recite, but they don't know what it says. So this is called indoctrination. Because the indoctrination is you have been taught something and you accept it uncritically, without critically thinking about it. And God wants us to be critical thinkers. That is why he says, Afala Quran. Do they then not contemplate the Quran? Am Allah Kulubil Akfaluha? Or do they have locks on their hearts? You need to open it up, scrutinize the book, contemplate. What makes sense to you, the believer, might not make sense to a mushrik. What makes sense to you, a believer, that might not make sense to an atheist? It's as simple as that. That's how life is. The laws you have in, in your country might not make sense to the laws of somebody who is in U.S. The laws they have in the United States might not make sense to somebody who is based in the United Kingdom. Somebody from Britain, they don't give you the right to own guns, right? People don't have guns there where you have guns going out in the street and shooting people like that. They don't have that. But you go to USA, people have the right to have own guns. And people keep killing each other. So to America, that law is normal for them, to have guns. But Britain, it's not normal for you to own a gun. Do you see how it works? So this law might make sense to these people, but it might not make sense to that people. So same goes with the faith. If God says something in the Quran, you as a believer, you can resonate with it. You can reason with it. You can understand what God meant by this. But a disbeliever or a mushrik will not accept that. That is why believing is a choice. You can't force somebody to believe what you are saying. It's a choice. Either take it or leave it. But you need to have knowledge of what you believe. You don't have to be a blind follower just because we say you can't force somebody. Do you understand? So you growing up as a Sunni, as a Shia, as a Christian, check well. You have been indoctrinated to accept certain things which are not found in the scriptures. I repeat, you have been indoctrinated to accept certain things which are not found in the scriptures, but you hold it in high esteem. And when you are questioned, prove to me, you sit there and look at people's faces. And then when you put emotions in front, that is what propels you to go and fight instead of using your rationale. You see, so ladies and gentlemen, uh -huh. So let me go through some of the questions that I was asked because I didn't have time to check. I've done one hour 20, almost 25 minutes. Yes. Uh, let me see some of the questions. Let's start with um, Facebook and YouTube first. Uh, let me see what I've missed. 
Uh, Musa Arabogo says, Salam, brother Babs. I don't know how to describe you, but you are the best I ever met in my life. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for the support. I appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> this motivates me. It keeps me going. Fine. I appreciate that. But what I want you to always do is I can do my best to enlighten people, make them, you know, reason. And but the, the 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 biggest weight rests on you to actually make use of of my time that i give you my lectures that i give you i want you to to be at at uh, at the same level with me so in order to be in the same level i need to teach you what i know in order for you to reach the same level but when you don't study and you rely on me blindly and you just just like what I teach the people without actually taking it seriously, then we are still in the same shithole. So what I do is I find my time, even though I would love to have done my lectures every week, two times or three times in a week, but because of my family, my work, my business is difficult. You understand? So I try to balance all this in order to, to attend to the people. Because remember, you are also my people. So it's not only about being on social media. You, the people who have time to sit down and watch me for two, three hours lectures and to listen to my videos, to listen to my lectures, you are also my people. Sometimes I walk in the street, somebody will just say hi to me. I don't know that. But they just hi to me and they call me the correctional officer. I'll just smile and say, oh, wow. I'll just shake the person's hand, we talk. And then say, oh, I like what you do. I like your lectures. I appreciate it. It helps me a lot. Because when you people appreciate what I do, it gives me the motivation to keep going. So I appreciate that. Now, somebody is saying, as an NSC says, in some Qurans, when you read chapter 1, verse 4, the first word is uh, Malik, kin. While in other Qurans, the same word is now Malik. Yes, Malik, yes. Let me put it on the screen so that people will see what I'm reading. Then he says, there are other examples in the Quran. How do you explain these uh, changes? Now, the Malik, Malik, Malik Yawmiddin is found in the Hafs version. That is, the people gave it the name Hafs. Then the Malik Yawmiddin is found in the Warsh version, which is usually used in the northern part of Africa, like the Arabian parts of Africa. The most popular version in the world is the half version, which is coming from Saudi Arabia. That is the most popular version. Now, they gave it the name halves and wash. However, I have checked the halves, uh, both halves and wash version. I've, I've scrutinized it myself. I've seen the difference. Now, I'm more inclined to halves version than wash version. I'll tell you why. Now, the reason is, if you take the word Malik Kiyomidi, you are limiting God to only being the king of the day of judgment. And God is always the king. Because Surah to Nas, chapter 114 says, Malikin Nas. He is the king of mankind. Ilahi Nas, he is the God of mankind. So God has always been the king. He is not only limited to a day, a particular day to be a king. So if you say Maliki Yomidin, you are limited God from his position of being a king of eternity to be in the king of the day of judgment. But when you are the owner, you own that day. God owns everything. But then he owns the day of judgment because no other king on earth or no other possessor on earth have we ever heard that any other entity possesses the day of judgment but the God. You understand? So that God we are talking about owns the day of judgment. He possesses the day of judgment. So Maliki that is owner or possessor is the correct statement i see a contradiction in the malik i don't see contradiction in the malik yomiddi. he owns the day of judgment he possesses it. so he would what disclose it to us on the day of judgment now so and they have a lot of things i can i can you know point out and tell you why i don't deal with the worship version i stick with the house version but then God never gave us a Quran by name saying this is what she just has. It is that what transliteration that people brought by. When people, as time goes, when people try to translate things to another version of Arabic, remember, Arabian language has different dialects. 
You understand? So dialects can differ when people are writing things, and then that is where people can change things to something else. But then, like I said, the house version, it it is it's resonance with history. It is the closest to the all the histories that they have, the information they have concerning the Quran. The house version sticks with that more than the worst version. Now, Truth Seeker says, uh, Kamal Badr Singh says, YouTube is full of sectarians fighting with each other, Shia, Sunni, Hanbali, etc. <clears throat> Do they not ponder when God told us not to divide into sex? No, they don't. That is why God is asking in Quran chapter 49, verse 16, Atu Are you the ones teaching God your religion? So they are rather teaching God their religion. So they don't listen to God, right? They don't fear God at all. Truth. Truth. Truthful seeker says, Peace, brother Shrive, and you all. Please, brother, can you share with us some wisdom about captivity in general? It seems like many people inside Quran has been in captivity as well. According to Quran, is God punish us for the sins we commit when we are in time of captivity? Uh, well, it, it depends. Uh, just a second. I think I have a file on this. <clears throat> when you are when you are restricted uh they, there is a word in quran they call they, they say rakaba rakaba is like to be enslaved through through restriction so the word rakaba is is more of a slave but not a slave in the same in the, in the form of abdi there's a difference when god says in chapter 90 fuck rakaba the rakaba God is talking about is somebody who is restricted, who is in captivity, confined, restricted. When you are restricted, there's a lot of things that come into play. You are restricted. It could be based on debt. It could be based on somebody park his car and you hit it by mistake. The glass broke. Now you have been captured and you cannot go. You have to pay for it. And a lot of things. You go to a, a restaurant to eat food and you couldn't afford for it. And now they they take you as a captive in order to to work there and pay for it so captivity plays a major a different a, a lot of rules but based on if i understand you clearly based on what you say if you said will god punish us for the sins we commit when we are in the when we are in captivity or during the time of captivity it all depends when you are restricted when you don't have a choice for instance pork meat is haram quran chapter 6 verse 145 but if i'm restricted and I don't have a choice. I can eat it and God will forgive me because he knows what is within your heart. He knows your intentions. Right? It is your intentions God is with dealing with. Right? Not, not the, the public act you have done. The intention which comes before the public act you commit. That is what God is dealing with. So now, when we are in captivity, a lot of things come into play. For instance, if I go somewhere where I'm restricted, and I don't have water to drink. I have no choice. If I find dirty water, I have to drink it to survive. Uh, your question is a broad one. Uh, so I think it's, it's a something that I can give a chance for open discussion where people... And ladies and gentlemen, my phone number is down there. Uh, Sharif Karim says, Brother, is it a sin that Iranian women are removing their hijabs? Does Allah order those women to wear hijab? First of all, the answer is no, he doesn't. There is no explicit command in the Quran which says women should wear hijab. The word hijab was as no connection whatsoever to do with covering the hair in the Quran, right? Uh -huh. When God says, even in Quran chapter 17, verse 45, he says, whenever you read the Quran, we place between you and those who do not believe in the hair after a concealed partition, hijab and mastura. So it is a concealed hijab. Now, when we say hijab, we are talking about a partition something like to cover something to veil something but it's not about covering the head now quran chapter 24 verse 31 quran chapter 33 verse 59 these verses have been taken out of context by sectarians to mean that a woman must may wear a hijab on the head the word humurihina used in the quran is about covers women's covers 
Where did God say they should cover? He says they should cover their juyubi hinna. Allah juyubi hinna. Their, their breast, their chest. This is where God says they should cover. So meaning a woman wearing a blouse is allowed. You cover that is homo, something to conceal something. And now covering the contours of her body, the shape of her body, is also permitted. According to 24, 31, and then 33, 59. But nowhere did God mention their hair, hair, that a woman should cover their hair. It's not part of it. But if a woman wants to do it, that's up to her. For instance, Miriam, chapter 19, verse, uh, verse 14 downwards. Chapter 19, verse 14 downwards. Mariam decided to isolate herself in the eastern location. She decided to fortify her private part, whereby she will not go around sleeping with people. And God used her for a miracle. Now, when you, the individual, decide to do something uh, in a fanatic way for God, that's up to you. There is nowhere God mandated women by force that they should wear hijab. Ask any scholar, hypocritical scholar out there, was, was uh, Adam, what he was Adam and Eve was Eve wearing hijab on her hair. Since when did the concept of this hijab started? Where, where does it say hijab that a woman should wear a cover on the head? It doesn't exist. What God wants you to do is to dress with modesty. Modesty means don't expose your sexually attractive part to the people. You have to keep it in a mod, mod uh, in, a, in the form of modesty, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So, libas takwa. Quran chapter 7, verse 26 to 27, text tells you about libas taqwa. That is the, the clothing of piousness. So when a woman or a man you're dressing, put piousness in your head whereby you can conceal certain things that will not cause people to be sexually aroused. But the hair of a woman, come on. <laughs> you understand? Book of Huda. He says, Salam, brother. Binawa, yes, Salam. We'll watch again from the beginning. I have serious question. No problem. Uh, Abdurrahman Sheikh says, Salam, sir. Please explain who is Al, Al Amri in this verse. Oh, you who have believed, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority among you. Now, when God says, Ya uh, yuwal lazina amanu, atiwullaha wa atiwu rasul wa ulil amr minkum. The Ulil Amr, this is pertaining to the time of the messenger when he was alive and he's talking to the believers. Now, when you read from verse, chapter 4, verse 59, you continue verse, verse 60, verse 61. You keep reading downwards. You see the context is talking about when the messenger was alive. So Quran chapter 4, verse 61 even says, when they are told to come to what God has revealed and to the messenger, you will see the hypocrite turning away from you. So he's talking to the messenger at that time. But the Ulil Amr, is explained in Quran chapter 4, verse 83. At the time of the messenger, there were people put in place to check the notion of security on any information. Huh? Uh -huh. Security and information, just like we have ministers of information and uh, security or whatever have you, or, of a country or minister of defense. So now those in charge at the time of Muhammad, salam, when he was a messenger, the Ulil Amr, as I said, check Quran chapter 4, verse 83. They are those put in place at the time of messenger to check the notion of security so that when is the news of fear, they will have to find it out to tell the people what to do. So these are the Ulil Amr. It has nothing to do with ulama, scholars of today. That's the point. Book of Huda says, a popular YouTube Sunni, sura, say, uh, Sunni says Surah 65 verse 4 allows Muslim to marry five-year-olds, but the Hadith stopped them. I don't believe him, but can you explain the verse, please? I looked and tried much and thanks. I will explain to you. Don't worry. So let's go to Quran chapter 65, verse 4. I think the, the popular Sunni scholar, uh, guy you are saying is Muhammad Hijab, right? Uh, when I saw the video, I was, I was laughing so hard. And I think one time I did a program with this. Uh, there's a guy called Setu. He interviewed me on a particular notion concerning this issue. And we discussed it. We had a discussion on it, right? When you go to Quran chapter 65, verse 4, uh, when God says, Wallahi ya isna min al mahid min nisa ikum. Now, I want you to underline the word nisa ikum. When we say nisa ikum, we are talking about adult female women. Adult 
female women. They are your women, your wives. Now, we are not talking about fatayaticum. We are not talking about your girls, your young women. <laughs> it's not even talking about people who, the hulum, who have not attained puberty. It's talking about your women, adult women. So God says, Wallahi ya isna min al mahid min nisa'ikum. Now he says, as for those who despair of menstruation among your women, then he says, Wallahi lam yahidna. Now this is where the controversy comes. If you doubt, then their period is three months. It's talking about the woman. Now the subject, when you are reading a context, a verse, always check the subject, the context, and the content. Now the subject is talking about women, your women, not your girls, not your babies, your women. As for those who despair of menstruation among your women, they despair, meaning they are doubting whether I'm, ah, my menstruation is starting or not. If you doubt, then their period is three months. They wait for three months. Now, to understand the subject, start from chapter 65, verse 1. That is the context. It is telling you about divorce. And divorce has to do with the women. It's not about girls or babies. <laughs> God never asked you to go and marry six years old girls. So the context starts from verse 1. When you read up to verse 4, this is where you understand. But when you take only one verse to say, oh, this is where he says we should marry girls, it doesn't talk about marriage in that verse. It talks about menstruation, and the menstruation has to do with the divorce, the time period for divorce, when you divorce women. So it goes, if you doubt, then their period is three months. Also for those who have not menstruated, the word lam, not lan, lan with an N means never. Then you can put young girls there. But it's talking about lam, not who have not menstruated. The subject is talking about your women. It's not talking about young girls or get, uh, small kids. It's talking about your women. If you despair when you want to divorce them and you are not sure whether they have menstruated, then you have to wait three months. And the ones who have not yet menstruated also, then you have to wait three months. Then God says, and those who are pregnant, the attempt is until they emanate their pregnancy, which means until they give birth. And whoever references God, he will make his matter easy for him. That is all what it means. It has nothing to do with young girls. It has nothing to do with babies. They are trying to propagate the garbage hadith to you, to propagate falsehood by making the Quran look silly and stupid. That is why they keep telling you such things. And I call them the hypocrites and mushriks. You understand? Uh -huh. So these people don't just don't understand the Quran. They rely on hadith to, to say they are going to explain the Quran. That's how foolish and naive they can be. You understand? Uh -huh. So you listen to what I just said. You start from verse 1. It's talking about the women. That is the subject. Nisa ikum. It's not talking about your fataya ikum, your young girls or something. The women, we know, we all know a six-year-old girl cannot be a woman. A nine-year-old girl cannot be a woman. You'll be the dumbest pedoph pedophile ever to classify a six-year-old girl as a woman. Right away with a definitive declaration from the Quran. As I said, Muhammad, our beloved, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was a Nabi for Bani Israel, for them, not for the followers of the Quran. We have proven this in YT 134. We're going to continue proving it and provide more evidence, direct evidence from the Quran and from the Hadith this time. So no one can accuse us of not benefiting from the Hadith. We benefit from the Hadith, but we use it in ways that they don't like. And therefore, when we present the hadith that show they are wrong, they don't like this. And they call us Qur'aniyun and this and that and the other thing. Alhamdulillah, we follow the truth and we use the hadith as historical references when we can ascertain that they are reliable, authentic, authoritative. And therefore, we don't use them against the Qur'an. We understand the Qur'an first and then we go looking through the historical references to see if some of these narrations don't agree with what the Quran says. So therefore, we start right away with a definitive declaration about the fact that Muhammad, our beloved وسلم, was a Nabi for Bani Israel. This is absolutely stunning because it's right there in the Quran. It says it. There is no doubt whatsoever. And you will see, inshallah, for yourself.
this is what he said aha uh -huh. so if it, it can be historically proven as authentic then they can use it in the light of the quran not against the quran so first he will check the quran and go and check the hadith so it means you are using the hadith and you rely on the hadith for a particular guidance as well so this is what i mean but i'm not saying he said i'm taking my guidance i'm just saying this is what i got from whatever he said mm -hmm. now on youtube uh, on, on on tiktok somebody is asking me he says so Alice Dada says, please, I want to know if you are not observing your five daily salats, can you still go to heaven? First of all, in the Quran, there's nothing called five daily salat. It doesn't exist. There's nothing called Hamza Salawat in the Quran. Now, the last time I checked, when an employer gives you a duty to do, if you don't do it, you'll be punished. But since I checked the Quran, the God that I serve never asked me to do Hamza Salawat why would i go to hell for not doing something he never commanded me do you get the point if sahih bukhari is your god then you have to do it then he will settle you that is sahih bukhari but not from god uh zach says babs please seto ssk is life right now asking if allah pray or not no he doesn't pray right the word Quran chapter 33 verse 56 where he says inna allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi is not about prayer the word has been conjugated the sallu ala is not talking about salat salat is different god wants you to establish salat he says akimu salat or akimi salat that is different from sallu ala there's a difference so do you have to understand how uh, words are conjugated in the Quran Sometimes God, you use the word Dharaballahu Mathalan. Dharaballahu Mathalan. God cites example, an example. It doesn't mean just because he said Dharaba, it means God beats. You don't literally take how words are presented in the Quran always. And that is the problem. So when somebody has doesn't have that knowledge, they will misconstrue everything and think that, oh, he has his sal salat and he has his salat. Allah. Oh, I think it's the same. No, you are a novice. You need to study well so don't take such uh people seriously when they say things like that it's ridiculous because uh like i said i keep talking about the, the problem with indoctrination is because because people don't reason people don't actually ask critical questions you know they will tell you when you have pictures in your room angels will not come in your house but how come people still die even though they have pictures they say when you have dogs the angels of mercy don't come we still still reach people having dogs in their houses and they are living better life than you do so people have been indoctrinated in a in a you know in a bad way and it's not helping at all so people need to wake up from this slumber and reason in order to follow the right way of the theme stop following what the scholars are telling you they are lying to you you understand uh-huh so i talk about the donation which is coming on the fundraising i'm raising it is true go fund me i'll be putting the links up very soon i'm just waiting for one or two things to be settled before the go ahead so i don't want to rush the things usually what i do is almost every six months i feed helpless old people back in ghana in my country where i come from especially the hood i come from the old people so that they can feel that they have not been neglected or forgotten so this is what I do, and I've done it several times, right? So this time again, we'll be doing it. I'll be organizing it now and starting hopefully uh, next week. I'll put up the link. People who want to donate can donate. Then we can do uh, the necessary uh, donations as well, inshallah. So usually I do put my money myself first. Then what follows is what we use to do it. So normally we feed close to... 60 to 100 people every time i organize it because based on the community i grew up from we have old people and i also recommend whoever is successful in life don't forget the old people the aged people in your communities try to organize the same type of events to feed the old people so that they cannot be feel they, they will not feel like they have been forgotten or you know gone we have to cherish them appreciate them before they leave us to try to give them whatever you can try to give them before they leave us. <clears throat> yeah. Kati Rahman on TikTok says, and um, please, how do you pray your salah? 
Kalti Rahman, I have it on my YouTube channel. When you check on TikTok, the side of my page, there is the angle where you can go to my YouTube channel. When you open, if you are a newcomer, the first thing you see, you see, I have it there in the playlist. You go to Salat series. I have it there. How the Salat is that? You will see how I do my Salat, right? Uh, Masbahul Islam says, Salam, brother. Baba Shwab, I think you are well in will of Allah. Allah bless you and your beloved family members with happiness and love. I appreciate that. Thank you too. And God bless you too. Thank you for the support. Uh, Alma Jones is as well. Always thank you so much for your time and lecture me, your family, and you stay blessed. I appreciate that. Thank you. Kamal says, Baba, why are people indoctrinated to thinking that this dunya is a prison? I wonder. When you go to Surah Tubakara, chapter 2, verse 200 and worse, it says, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanat wa fila akhirat asanat wa kina azab nar. You have to fight for this world as well. But however, you don't have to make the world the ultimate objective. But you have to you have to struggle to, to succeed in life as well. We saw Prophet Suleiman. He was successful on earth. And he will go to God successful as well. We saw David. We saw Ayub. We saw the rest. So you have to strive for what you have around you. But you don't have to make the world the number one objective. You understand? Just like when a worker is working, you work to earn your salary. Of course, you love your job. But your number one objective should be what? Your salary. But then you, it doesn't mean you neglect your work. You have to take your duty seriously, but then your objective should be your salary because you have to use it to better your life. So similarly, in the dean, what indoctrination does is they indoctrinate the people to forget the worldly life whilst their scholars will be living in expensive mansions, in expensive houses, driving expensive cars, using private jets, and living the best life. And then they will tell you, oh, forget about the dunya. Think about the Akhira. Eh? You have to be poor. It's better to be poor. And even there is this one scholar from Saudi Arabia. I don't call him a scholar because he sat on live television and said he drinks beer, 2%, 3%. His name is Asim Al-Hakim. <clears throat> he said he's not a scholar. But he give consultation and take $100 each. 30 minutes consultation, $100. You have to pay him to consult with him. Please explain chapter 72 verse 18 for me. If God says we should not mention anyone in our salat, and sectarians still mention the prophet name. Uh, Musa said, Quran chapter 72 verse 18 says, Wa anna uma allahi ahada. Right? So the mosque, the places of submission, the places of worship, the places of prostration are for God alone. So do not invoke. <clears throat> it doesn't say do not mention. Let's say I'm, I'm praying to God. And I mention my mother's name and I say, God, grant my mother health. That is not haram. God, grant this, this, this. That is not haram. But to invoke, it means you are summoning, you are calling on someone. And that is what the sectarians do. They come in their salat, at lillahi, wa salawatu wa tayyibat. Then they say, assalamu alayka, ayu wa nabiyu, wa rahmatullahi. You can see here, they are going against chapter 72, verse 18. They are invoking someone else, which is the prophet, aside God. Because how can you be calling God at the same time, calling the prophet? Because if I tell you, Musa said, Assalamu alaika, it means I'm talking to you directly. It means you are in front of me. It means you can see me. So going to the extent in your salat to say, Assalamu alaika, ayu and nabi, simply you are a mushrik. God never asks you to come and do this rubbish in your salat. So if you are doing that, please critically think and refrain. Refrain from that. It's dangerous. That is not what God asks you to do. Muhammad Senior, uh, Muhammad S. Junior Butler says, Salam, dear brother Shraib. I had the Tablik Jamaat inviting me to most to listen to a lecture after Isha. How do I write to them? Uh, being invited to listen to, to a lecture is a choice. You can decide to go or not to go, but you should have a reasons why you don't want to go. However, when you decide to go and listen, you should have questions written down where you ask them questions. Questions which will make them not to invite you the next time. Because I love doing that. When people come to me and try to indoctrinate me with something else, I try to give them critical questions that will make them stay away from me. Simple. So try to do that. Sharif Karim. You are a real eye opener. Thanks God who has sent you. Inshallah, God bless you. I appreciate that, Sharif Karim. Uh, Book of Huda says, Brother, <clears throat> what is the grammatical understanding of Quran in Surah 1746? 
People think it means Quran alone, and translators translate it as your Lord alone in the Quran. Now, this part is uh, actually interesting. <clears throat> the grammatical instance of that Qur uh, Quran Wahadahu. Now, when you check the word, وَإِذَا ذَكَرْتَ رَبَّكَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَحْدَهُ That وَحْدَهُ قُرْآنِ وَحْدَهُ That رَبَّكَ which was mentioned رَبَّكَ doesn't denote the وَحْدَهُ It doesn't say رَبُّكَ It says رَبَّكَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ So grammatically if it says وَإِذَا ذَكَرْتَ رَبُّكَ Fil Qur'ani wahdahu. Then this Rabbuka and the Qur'anu will be in line. That means your Lord alone. But he says, Faiza zakarta rabbaka. There is a fata there. So rabbaka. Fil Qur'ani wahdahu. It denotes the Qur'an and the wahdahu in, goes together. So it is not your Lord alone in the Qur'an. It's actually the Qur'an alone. You understand? So these tashkils, the scholars who are claiming the tashkils, the scholars who are claiming the tashkils put on the Quran came at a later time. They are lying to you. They are liars. Now they try to twist this notion of these tashkils and bring a grammatical rule which is not in the support of the Quran. Because remember, the MSA Arabic standard is different from the classic fusha of the Quran. They are two different things altogether. They are not the same. There's a lot of difference in the classical Arabic compared to the Modi standard. A lot of changes have been made. So they try to implement a Modi standard rule to the classical rule, which is wrong. And now the fusha they have today was all derived from the Quran. The Quran is the clear Arabic language. Lisan and Arabi and Mubi. So if you have to impose any rule, it has to come from the Quran, not coming from outside and onto the Quran. It is a wrong way to do. So rules have to come from the Quran not outside the Quran. This is why the Quran is al furqan the criteria. So, yeah, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the time and support. I appreciate your time and support. Uh, thank you, Salma Johnson Salam, Book of Huda, uh, Masbahul Islam, Har, Abdul Samad, Hajj London, uh, everybody, those who are here, those who are not here, those who watch later, I appreciate your support, your time, your effort. Keep supporting the channel. Let's get to the masses let's get to the more majority of people to study and know what god says in order to find ease in worshiping god and serving god now ladies and gentlemen this is where i bring the topic to an end so peace be upon you all and we meet again next week inshallah it brings to an end we Thank start you right much. away with a definitive declaration from the quran as I said, Muhammad, our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was a Nabi for Bani Israel, for them, not for the followers of the Quran. We have proven this in YT 134. We're going to continue proving it and provide more evidence, direct evidence from the Quran and from the Hadith this time. So no one can accuse us of not benefiting from the Hadith. We benefit from the Hadith, but we use it in ways that they don't like. And therefore, when we present the hadith that show they are wrong, they don't like this. And they call us Qur'aniyun and this and that and the other thing. Alhamdulillah, we follow the truth and we use the hadith as historical references when we can ascertain that they are reliable, authentic, authoritative. And therefore, we don't use them against the Qur'an. We understand the Qur'an first and then we go looking through the historical references to see if some of these narrations don't agree with what the Quran says. So therefore, we start right away with a definitive declaration about the fact that Muhammad, our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was a Nabi for Bani Israel. This is absolutely stunning because it's right there in the Quran. It says it. There is no doubt whatsoever. And you will see, inshallah, for yourself.